have you been up to, Fedora team? You've been, you've been cooking stuff behind the scenes. You've been keeping some secrets because all of a sudden Fedora 33 comes on the scene here. I've been playing with it for several weeks and I'm just like, what? Where have you been this whole time? Welcome to the party, Fedora. I'm glad you're here. And man, you made one heck of an entrance here. Now, a lot of people were going to leave comments. Fedora has always been great for the desktop. And I'm not going to argue with you. But it's not been one you hear people talk about of, hey, you know, if you're new to Linux, you're an intermediate to Linux, you're an expert in Linux, move to Fedora. It's kind of one of those things where people find it on their own, they go use it or they don't. But it, it's not something that's talked about heavily in a lot of the Linux community. But now things are changing. Fedora seems to have come to the party fully loaded here and ready to do something special on the desktop. That's what we're going to talk about in this video and for the Linux desktop experience. Specifically, we're focusing on, I'm going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I can tell you right now, at the end of the day, there are going to be two distros that are going to be contenders for my distro of the year. And that's between Fedora and Pop! OS. Those are the two I see innovating the most right now. Those are the two that have my interest. And I can't wait to get your opinion in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. All right, so let's get my ugly mug out of the way and just take a look at this GNOME 3.38 desktop environment. GNOME, GNOME, by the way, it doesn't matter. The GNOME Foundation themselves say they don't care. You could use either one. So stop with that nonsense. But anyways, look at it. Look at it. Now respect it. Very beautiful. 3.38 is gorgeous. Of course, that's not unique to just Fedora, but Fedora presents more of a vanilla version of the GNOME desktop. So they don't do a lot of tweaking with it. They leave it as is, which to me is important to cover in this video because while there are other flavors of Fedora, if you like KDE, XFCE, or different desktop environment, the GNOME team here has done really good work in enhancing the speed and performance of GNOME, and you can feel it, and even stock vanilla, it's pretty darn good. Now, I hate things like the fact that I have to install GNOME tweaks in order to change uh, very simple things like your appearance, uh, adding icons, different backgrounds, stuff like that to me in GNOME is just silly. It's like they meant for it to be just a workstation desktop at one point and have decided hopefully to start integrating a lot more of the extension system and just keep improving that performance of GNOME overall. And I think that this chosen desktop, whether you like it or not, it's kind of the chosen desktop environment. All the mainstream distros focusing on GNOME is finally starting to get to the point where I think it could be taken a lot more serious as a Linux desktop, desktop environment than prior. So I'm running this on complete bare metal. So unlike a lot of video reviews out there where they're like, I put it in a virtual machine and it seems kind of snappy and fast and all that. I've been using this for weeks. I've been editing videos on it. I've been doing the Destination Links podcast, Hardware Addicts podcast. I've been doing all kinds of awesome little projects, even with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano and things like that within Fedora. So I've got a true user bare metal experience here to give you installation is simple you know a lot of people do not like anaconda compared to other installers but to me it's pretty cut and dry i think they've made enough changes to it that it, it's quite obvious you know you go through each of these prompts and and you're done and then of course one of the big changes in fedora 33 is we have butterfs file system and for those who don't know anything about file systems, you're like, how do I know? What is it doing different? And you're not going to know anything. You're not going to experience any difference right now. And that's the sign of a fantastic switch from the Fedora team to the ButterFS file system is that you won't know unless you go look that you've actually switched to ButterFS. It, there has been zero issues. I've had absolutely no complaints or problems or errors or anything else with ButterFS. And in the future, this unlocks a lot of potential to do things like the snapshotting options in ButterFS, which are just supremely awesome. So if you do an update, it messes up your system for whatever reason, you can just click that roll back button and go back in time and you are back up and running. So some of those features are not turned on yet in Fedora 33, 
but this is kind of the starting point, right? They're testing the waters here with ButterFS and you won't notice a difference and that's the sign they did it right. One of the other big differences you're gonna notice in the Fedora world is the lack of the proprietary garbage being shoved down your throat. So you do have the option, if you open up the software store here, just open up the GNOME software. And I think, by the way, this is one of the best implementations. DNF does it the best as far as installers go and in working with the GNOME desktop. It just, it's flawless. I've had zero issues, errors, problems installing anything. Generally, I just stick in the terminal because a lot of these application installers are just, they're, they're not good. They work half the time and, and things, but this has been really, really solid. But you notice there's no shoving down your throat of proprietary stuff. If you want some proprietary things, though, they make it really easy here. You just click on this little hamburger menu, click on software repositories, and here you can enable things. In fact, this, the first time you open this, it will ask you if you want to enable RPM Fusion so you can bring down some of that stuff. So we got PyCharm on here, Google Chrome if you want it. I don't know why you should be using Firefox. Uh, you've got your NVIDIA drivers that you can install right from here. Very, very easy and simple. And you can enable other software repositories right from here as well. Uh, you could do your updates through here. So we can we have an update right now. Restart and update your system all through the software store. And again, everything is really well laid out and works perfect with DNF. And I love DNF. If you're coming from apt, let me show you the beauty of DNF and why it's going to be a life changer for you. And it's so simple. They're so compatible with each other. You're just trading out apt with DNF in most cases. So let's take a look at that because I think that's a big deal and a big difference in these worlds. All right, so what we're going to do is open up a term terminal and if we want to search for software you might be used to you know the sudo or you don't need the sudo apt search something and in this case if you're coming from ubuntu or something like that in this case we just do dnf search and we could do i don't know maybe krita let's do krita so dnf search krita and boom we've got krita right there if we want to install krita i think it already is installed but just in case we could do the sudo dnf install krita and put in our password and boom, we have Krita being installed. Of course, in this case, it's already installed, so it's not going to be able to find anything. If we want to remove an app, guess what? You could probably come up with the idea here, DNF remove and then the app name. That's it and boom, you're done. You've removed the app. Of course, you'd probably need sudo there. Not probably you will uh, to do that, but that just shows you apt and DNF extremely similar. Now. If you're wanting to update your system from the terminal, if you're coming from apt, you would do an apt update and then an apt upgrade. But with DNF, it combines those into one. So if you do DNF update or DNF upgrade, it's going to do both. So since we have an upgrade already pending, we can go ahead and show you what that looks like if I could figure out how to type here today. There we go. And you can see it's gonna give us a list of everything it's going to install, including the latest Mesa drivers, later kernel, that's what I really love about Fedora. I have such an issue, as many of you know, listen to Destination Linux, that a lot of these so-called stable distros out there, that they, they release their kernel updates and just take six months or more to get them. Whereas when you're dealing with Fedora, while they're not a rolling distro, some people consider them kind of like a semi-rolling because it's just much more up to date than you're gonna get in a Debian or Ubuntu world. So it's kind of a mix of both those worlds. You're in between the Debian and Ubuntu and the Arch, which is kind of the cutting edge. And so Fedora kind of sits right there in the middle, which is really nice balance, focusing on the stability, but still keeping that hardware enablement stack up to date in a much, much faster pace. Speaking of which, let's take a look at what we've got. So we are on kernel 5.8.18-300 here in this fedora with this update of course we haven't rebooted but you can see we did all of the pack the updates and the upgrade all in one it was just one command there another thing that dnf has rolled all into one which is a big difference compared to apt is getting package information so with apt you would have to do apt show to get information about a package and then app cache policy would give you information about the repository with dnf you just do dnf info so if i just do dnf info I don't know why we're picking on Krita so much. So here is all of our information on the Krita package here. As far as default application, it comes with all of the open source 
applications you've come to love. You get the Firefox, you get LibreOffice, you get your basic stock apps that you're used to in an open source environment. Now, some of the things that I have installed here, you know, we've got Cheese, OBS Studio, of course, our NVIDIA drivers, App Image Launcher, which I wish was built in to every distro. If, if you have App Images, Universal Package there, then and you want them to show up with icons once you install it versus having to go through the file system to launch it, App Image Launcher allows you to do that. It should be default everywhere. Of course, we have Green with Envy. We have a bunch of games, Lightworks. Look at me throwing that proprietary stuff on this, but you know, I need a good video editor. What am I going to say here? We've got Pulse Effects, Steam, Sublime Text, Telegram, everything that I need to get started and more. Zernal, Ocean Audio, Among Us, DaVinci Resolve, which a lot of people were telling me, hey, DaVinci's finally at the point where it's a great video editor that installs in Linux and look how easy it is. And of course, I can get it installed this time, which is, I guess, a bonus compared to previous times. But everything that I move into it video wise shows blank. So you would think it's a missing codec or something, but it works in there, light works and works in Caden Live. So who knows? DaVinci Resolve still working on that. So let's get into some of the problems that I experienced or things that I would like to see changed. When I first installed, for some reason, OBS Studio nor Simple Screen Recorder appear to be in the software store. However, once I've installed them, if I do a search now, they show up. So was it just I was looking at the wrong time? Like it's, it's here now. I don't know if once I installed it, it shows up. It's a flat hub, but at least in the initial experience when I was looking for this package, it didn't exist. Simple screen recorder didn't exist. And those are two open source projects. So I would have expected to see them there, but maybe again, it was an update that hadn't gone through yet. OBS studio still does not work with Wayland. So Adora is trying to push the envelope with Wayland forward, which I think is a really good thing. We need to be moving towards Wayland at the same time until Wayland gets the basics done, like the ability to screen record the ability to and, and this all of this is improving in wayland it is frustrating because new users are not going to know to go and log out and then at the login screen click a little gear icon and switch to an xorg experience they're not going to know anything about that and there's nothing in the intro of fedora install to tell you hey if you experience some issues or you're doing a lot of you know screen recording and that type of activity you may want to do this if you're going to go more with this cutting edge idea where you're going to push things before they're necessarily fully baked, then you're going to need to make sure you're telling users, especially new users, how they can get around some of these issues. Otherwise, they're going to have this terrible first experience in Linux, not being able to do something simple like screen record in OBS. And yet, it, of course, Linux can do it and it does it amazingly well. But because you're not telling anybody, they're going to be stuck in searches on the online or just giving up and going somewhere else. Another weird thing I experienced is Steam wasn't showing up in the software store after I enabled the third party repos. I had to install it through DNF. So I just did DNF search Steam and it was right there and installed it. But again, it just could have been at the time when I was first doing this install, which was weeks ago, they hadn't fixed that. That might have been a bug. Um, but just again, another experience. Steam's a big deal, right? For a desktop user, something you want to get right off the bat. Caden Live was another one that wasn't showing in the software store. Okay, so the really frustrating thing in Fedora right now is has to do with the lack of previews for your thumbnails. This is a very basic thing in a desktop environment. This this is something you expect on your phone, something you expect on your tablet, and certainly something you expect on your desktop environment. So to have to do kind of this voodoo thing of installing FFmpeg thumbnailer and then having to do this remove cache for the thumbnails and then reopen things. You can see I'm like going to my notes, trying to figure out how to get thumbnails to actually show a preview. It, it's, it's really silly really silly stuff. Now, gaming on Fedora is a great, fantastic experience. I've been playing near Automata, no matter what distro, by the way, because that's, you know, running through Proton. Uh, you're, you're getting an okay experience between 40 and 60 frames per second, but enough to play it. And the game's not meant to play in Linux. When you're playing games that are native to Linux, uh, like Left 4 Dead and stuff, they run beautiful in Fedora. So I've had a fantastic experience in that.
Finally, you want another fantastic experience. Go check out DigitalOcean. They sponsor the entire Destination Linux network. They're just a fantastic company and you can learn so much and you're gonna get $100 of credit to do so and you're gonna get tons of knowledge from this. This is one of the big ways that I learned Linux so fast in the just few years that I've been in it was because I was constantly dropping DigitalOcean Linux servers out there, get thousands of cloud agnostic tutorials to go out there and play with and learn things step by step, just follow the instructions. You're going to retain a lot of information and they have the ability to get the apps to the market faster. So if you have an app, you wanna get it deployed out there, they now have this one click or few click deploy system with apps, just amazing. Go to do.co slash DLN, get your $100 credit there. Also, don't forget, especially in this day and age, do not have a password, the same password, even with your Fedora installation that you're doing here. Do not use the same password to log into your desktop that you use to log into your Proton account, that you use to log into your bank account. You need different passwords. You need advanced passwords. One of the first things I install when I'm doing a new distro is Bitwarden. It gets me into all of the applications because it's the best password manager on the planet. They also sponsor Destination Linux Network, so big shout out to them. Go to bitwarden.com slash DLN to let them know we sent you. Sign up for the $10 per year, per year, per year, not month, per year account and get tons of premium features out there. If you're using LastPass or one of those other ones, I'm telling you, switch to Bitwarden to change your life. All right, so Fedora 33, ButterFS, DNF, it's a beautiful thing. It's also great to understand Red Hat products out there to get a feel for what's gonna be in Red Hat in the future by what's happening on Fedora. If you're interested in getting into Linux as a career, I love what Fedora's cooking. I love their focus on the non-proprietary. That does create some frustrations at times with getting things like thumbnails to show up properly but I think they can figure out, they're so smart over there. I know they can figure out a way to fix those type of problems or create a simple workaround. And what you're going to have is a huge company that's been open source the entire time, focusing their attention on the Linux desktop, I hope, and pushing us in the innovation forward to look at the future of things like the need for convergence across devices which is gonna be really important to the survival of the Linux desktop, in my opinion, in the future. Let me know what you think about Fedora 33. What are some of the features you love that I didn't cover in here, or GNOME 3.38 for that matter. Let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the love and support for this channel. Do not miss DLN Game Fest happening this Sunday. So go get information on that. Go to destinationlinux.network. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.